Hello everyone, in today's video, we're looking at one of Macrotech's newest products, the Hex S 2025. The name looks familiar, especially if you have used the original Hex S, which has been one of Macrotech's most popular routers for years. Here's what we're covering. We'll start with the price change and a quick spec overview of the new 2025 model. Then. We'll compare the Hex S 2025 with the Legacy Hex S side by side. After that, we'll look at hardware differences, including the CPU, architecture, and storage changes. We'll also talk about the new product code versus the old one. Then, we'll cover capability differences, what the old Hex S could do that the new one can or cannot. We'll review test results, and finally, will wrap up with industry use cases and whom this router makes sense for. Before we dive into the router itself, let me quickly show you the updated Macrotech website. They recently refreshed the whole layout, so the hardware section looks cleaner. If you go to Macrotech.com, Hardware, Ethernet Routers, and search for Hex S, you'll now see both models, the legacy Hex S and the new Hex S 2025. The first thing that jumps out is the price. The old one at $79 and the new one at $69. And of course, the big question, why is the newer model cheaper? We'll break it down next. Proceeding with the product code explanation, the legacy Hex S uses the traditional router board naming format. RB760IGS, which according to its own video, you already know the product code explanation. The Hex S 2025 adopts the updated naming style, E60IUGS, where the letter E effectively implies the beginning letter of its E in series CPU, marking the shift away from the legacy RBS scheme. And unlike the older model, the U adds the presence of a USB port for storage devices, while the remaining characters retain the same meaning across both products. Now, let's go into the product page and compare the two models properly. On the top right of each product card, Macrotech added a small green compare icon. Click both, scroll to the bottom right of the page, and you'll see the compare button showing two items selected. Let's open it up. Macrotech literally released this updated site, so expect a few formatting issues until they polish it. But the data itself is correct, so let's go line by line. Both routers come with 5 gigabit Ethernet ports. The main difference starts with the CPU architecture. The legacy Hex S uses the MMAPS MT7621H chip, while the new 2025 model moves to the arm base EN7562CT CPU. The beeper is also gone on the new model. This is one of the small cuts that helped Macrotech drop the price from $79 to $69. Useful features for troubleshooting, but not critical for most people. The legacy model has four CPU threads, while the 2025 model is limited to two. However, the core frequency jumps from 880 MHz up to 950 MHz on the new router, so you still get more raw performance per core. Another improvement, the new model adds CPU temperature monitoring, which the old one didn't have. Power input is similar. Both follow the 12 to 57 volt input power. Physical dimensions are the same. Indoor rated with IP20 and carries around 100,000 hours MTBF, roughly over 11 years at 25 degrees. Power consumption is slightly lower on the new model, 1 watt less under load and 1 watt less at idle. The bigger difference is the storage. The micro SD slot from the legacy Hex S is gone. This matters for things like storage, logging, and especially for running the dude and user manager packages, which we'll talk about later. Both routers ship with router OS 7. 
While the Legacy Hex S is backward compatible with Router OS 6, the 2025 model cannot. RAM has doubled on the 2025 version, and internal storage has also improved from 16 megabytes of flash to 128 megabytes of NAND. The SFP interface also changed. The Legacy unit uses a gigabit fiber interface, while the 2025 model supports 2.5 gigabit. We'll talk about the challenges with that port and real-world compatibility later. The switch chip on the new 2025 model has been updated to the newer EN7523. We'll review the block diagrams and test results later to see how this affects performance. The 2025 model also upgrades from USB 2 Type A to USB 3 Type A. Overall, a mix of improvements on CPU, storage, RAM, USB, and SFP interface, along with a few removed features like the beeper and microSD slot. While the 2.5 gigabit SFP is a big deal, let's investigate the functionality in the real world. The 2.5 gigabit SFP interface won't be as effective when the LAN interfaces threshold is limited to 1 gigabit speed only. No matter what module you plug in, the traffic bottlenecks as soon as it hits the switch. So, while 2.5 gigabit SFP sounds impressive, it delivers no real-world benefit and is actually less compatible than the older 1 gigabit SFP. We will go over the block diagram to review this threshold in detail. The Legacy Hex S includes a microSD slot, which adds flexibility. The SD card on Legacy Hex S is an advantage for logs, backups, the dude server, and radius, which generates constant read and write activity. Running the dude and user manager packages on SD cards protects the router's internal NAND from heavy wear, preserving longevity. It also keeps the USB port free, allowing the legacy model to use LTE modems, USB to Ethernet adapters, or even link two hex units together for custom multi-port builds. On the Hex S 2025, the SD slot has been removed to reduce cost and simplify the hardware. That works fine for users who don't need external storage, but it does mean that do databases, logging, or expansion may require using the USB port or the internal NAND, limiting options compared to the older model. The new version is still fully capable for straightforward setups, but the Legacy Hex S offers greater storage flexibility for advanced or integrated level deployments. Looking at both block diagrams, the Legacy Hex S reveals a much more adaptable internal design than most small routers. Port 1 and the SFP share a dual 1 gigabit per second aggregated link to the CPU, while ports 2 to 5 can operate in two completely different modes depending on whether the hardware switch is enabled or disabled. In enabled switching mode, those ports sit behind the integrated switch chip, allowing LAN-to-LAN -LAN traffic to move at wire speed without ever touching the CPU. But in disabled switching mode, each Ethernet port is routed to its own independent 1 gigabit per second path, bypassing the switch entirely and letting you treat every port as a routed interface. This means you can freely remove ports from the switch group, build partial or fully independent and decide exactly which traffic is handled by the switch chip and which is sent to the CPU. The result is a design that gives the Legacy Hex S far more routing and port assignment flexibility than the newer models. With complete control over switching behavior, traffic flow and how each interface participates in your network. By contrast, the Hex S2025 moves to a simpler, more fixed architecture. Port 1 still goes directly to the CPU, making it the natural WAM port. But ports 2 through 5 all fed into a 4-port gigabit PHY bounded to a single 4-gigabit backplane, which connects to the SOC. This allows a smooth LAN-to-LAN -LAN communication without bottlenecks, but it also means those ports are permanently grouped at the switching level 
and cannot be decoupled the way they can on the older model. The SFP path also changes. Although it supports 2.5 gigabit speed, it terminates directly at the CPU and is ultimately constrained by the surrounding 1 gigabit Ethernet ports. So the practical throughput remains the same as before. Macrotech provides full all-port bridging tests across several configurations and packet sizes. In the large 1518 byte results, the new Hex S2025 reaches about 4.1 gigabit per second on fast pass bridging on all ports combined. Compared to the legacy Hex S, at roughly 1.7 gigabit per second, this gives the newer EN7562CT a clear lead in high volume and large packet bridging. As expected, throughput drops with the smaller packets or when bridge filtering is applied. In these conditions, the Hex S2025 holds its number more consistently, while the older MT7621A declines more sharply with 512 byte and 64 byte traffic. As always, we go back to our five basic questions before choosing any Microtech router. What is your usage type? How many simultaneous users will be active? What is the size and number of packets involved? What bandwidth does your ISP or WISP provide? Is the traffic normal or encrypted? Both versions of the Hex S deliver a strong set of practical network solutions. They support LTTP IPsec and WireGuard VPN for secure site-to-site -site links as well as remote access VPN for users connecting from outside the network. As edge routers, they can handle firewall duties, provide DNS services, and offer content filtering to block unsafe or unwanted sites. For visibility, they support network monitoring, while the legacy model can even run the dude server for full network maps and alerting. Both models also work reliably in surveillance systems, offering stable wire connectivity for IP cameras and NVRs that needs continuous, uninterrupted streaming. These routers fit naturally into a wide range of environments, including home networks, small businesses, and education labs, where silent and reliable operation is important. The Legacy Hex S extends further into IoT panels, industrial control cabinets, and RV or boat networks, thanks to its 12 volt power support and SD USB expansion options. Both models are also a practical fit for events networking, IT service companies, ISPs, and wireless internet service providers, offering smart proactive monitoring, easy deployment, and dependable wired connectivity across diverse installations. Thanks for watching. We appreciate any and all questions in the comment section. Make sure to subscribe so you won't miss our future tutorials.